Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Forward Therapy. My name is Kelly Troutman. I'm a certified hand therapist um, and it is hand therapy week 2020 baby. So this whole week is hand therapy week, which is just a week of trying to promote the field, kind of spread awareness um, and highlight, you know, pioneers in the field, leaders in the field, and just bring a light to what we do as hand therapists. So so I just wanted to give a couple of quick updates about forward therapy um, in general. So I am now uh, on TikTok because that's apparently a thing that I do now. Uh, so for forward therapy, we have a TikTok. I will link that below, but it's literally just at forward therapy. It's just these cute little videos, different exercises, um, different hand therapy topics that are within 15 second clips. So it's been really fun, excited about that. It's been a cool new project. So definitely follow me there at Forward Therapy. And then if you have a second, I would love to have you subscribe to my my Twitter channel as well or kind of join me on Twitter as well. Again, at Forward, I think underscore therapy. I'll put it up on the screen and then again below in the comments box, but just so that you don't miss any content and you can stay in touch with me and I can stay in touch with you and better understand how we can lift up this amazing profession and really help connect with patients, um, people out in the world, surgeons, doctors, other therapists, students, everybody. I want this channel to be for everyone and I do it for everyone. So thank you for letting me share that with you. And without further ado, we're going to get into the video. So today I thought it would be really fun for Hand Therapy Week to share um, kind of some of my tips, I guess. So today's video, I'm going to be showing you or sharing with you, not showing you, um, some ideas for when you are a fieldwork student in hand therapy specifically, because it's not something that you usually learn in school. And so it can be very difficult to come into the field as a fieldwork student into a hand therapy setting because you don't know anything and you have to learn everything and it feels super overwhelming. So I'm gonna share with you kind of my top resources or tips, any place that you can get information, things that I did when I was a fieldwork student and general tips for success. So let's get into it. When I was doing my hand therapy field work, one of the first things that I did, knowing that I would feel overwhelmed and being the perfectionist that I am, um, I went out to the store and I bought like a little spiral notebook and I made some hand, filled, bleh, hand therapy field work notes. And I this was like, this was like my holy grail. I literally spent so many hours during my field work studying and just immersing myself in everything because hand therapy is so complex and you pretty much go in knowing nothing, right? Like, you know the basics, you know the anatomy, you basically know nothing else. Um, so you literally have to just learn all the time and be open to learning and be really committed um, in your quest for learning and your quest for knowledge so that you can treat the patients better and, um, actually have good outcomes so it's kind of fun for me looking back over this but I literally like would write down a main diagnosis and then I would like take notes from all of the different resources that I had any clinical pearls from my supervisor my fieldwork supervisor who was amazing I would look through the um Indiana protocol book and like take notes on each diagnosis or like kind of considerations. I would go through Google searches through different books, texts, all those kinds of things. And I would take like detailed notes about them so that I could keep reviewing them and keep practicing them. And I could like quickly look through them if I had a question or if I, you know, had a new eval coming in and I wanted to review that diagnosis before I saw the patient. I had somewhere quick that I could go and, and be like, okay, this is how this is. This is what you, you should expect, you know, those kinds of things. So it's a pretty full notebook. I mean, I really have a lot of pages filled with just tons and tons and tons of notes um it's not something that i still really look through other than just for like true nostalgic purposes 
Um, I did field work four years ago, which is crazy, but I still am gonna hold on to this forever because it just, I worked really hard on it. Um, but I would definitely suggest that if you learn really well, like I'm somebody who learns really well by taking notes and kind of practicing things over and over and thinking it as I'm writing it, as I'm learning it, it helps me integrate information. So for me, that was really helpful. So I would definitely suggest, you know, possibly keeping a notebook with you. You can keep it at home or at your field work, you can take it with you. And that way, you know, when your field work supervisor tells you something or you learn something or you hear something that you want to look up later, jot it down and then you can go back to it and kind of take more thorough notes on it. So would highly recommend doing that for any fieldwork students out there, especially in hand therapy, but in any setting, you're always gonna be wanting to learn more. And there's only so much you can absorb in a day. So if you can quickly write things down later, you can go back to it and kind of do that spaced repetition, that active recall, right? All the ways that you learn best. So that's my tip number one. And then I kind of wanted to talk through some of the resources, um, textbooks, uh, internet sources that I used a lot when I was a student. Um, so obviously, first and foremost, you are there with a fieldwork supervisor to learn. Now, not every person is going to have the same experience. Not every fieldwork supervisor is going to teach you in the way that you want to be taught or the way that you learn um, and vice versa, right? Like we're all different. Um, Everyone's gonna have a different experience. But your fieldwork supervisor is a professional. They are a specialist in their field. They've probably been doing it a really long time. If you have questions, ask them. I think a really good strategy to go about that is not to just ask every thought that comes into your head, but to have a question, kind of think about what you think the answer might be or do a little bit of research, and then go to your fieldwork supervisor with that information so that you have a better way to understand it, right? You've seen some of the material before, you've thought about it, your brain is gonna be working in that way, but it also shows them that you are willing to learn, that you are willing to take time out of your day to look these things up, and that's gonna make them want to interact with you more and give you a little bit more information. Um, I had a great fieldwork supervisor he really taught by fire, which is a way that I learn really well. It's very uncomfortable at the time um, because you're put on the spot in front of patients sometimes, you're asked questions, and, and there was never pressure. Like he never, you know, it was never like, oh, you did a terrible job with that. But he would pose questions to me often, and it would be in front of patients. It would be, what's this? What do you, you know, what do you think this is? Um, and it was a great way for me to learn because I would have the visual reminder of of kind of, okay, this is, you know, he's working on this patient, this is what he's seeing, what does he want me to pick up on here? And that's a great way to learn. You need to be able to observe, you need to be able to feel, listen, look, um, all those things are really important. So for me, that worked out great. I can't say enough good things about my supervisor, but not everybody has that learning style and not everybody has that teaching style. So be flexible, but don't be afraid to ask your fieldwork supervisor questions or um, have discussions with them. You're there to learn and they are a great source of knowledge for you. The other book that I think is so super helpful, well, there's two books actually really that I used a lot. Um, the first one is Cynthia Cooper's Fundamentals of Hand Therapy. I don't have the physical book. I actually purchased it on my iPad as an ebook or like a Kindle book or whatever, um, which it is not a bad way to have it because it's with you everywhere, it's portable. Um, I really recommend that book for anybody that's new to hand therapy, um, a fieldwork student, an OT student, um, a new grad, anybody who's just starting to kind of creep into the hand therapy world for the first time. It's a really great resource. It gives you a broad overview of a lot of different topics and it's gonna help you get started. So I used that book a lot um, and we actually, it was one of the textbooks for my school, University of Pittsburgh at the time uh, when I was studying there, they did have a hand therapy class one semester, once a week, um, which was really helpful. It was just a very brief introduction of kind of some of the diagnoses that we typically treat, but it was really helpful to have. Um, so 
Go Pit. I think that was one way that they definitely st stood out um, at the time. I don't know if they've changed their curriculum. Anyway, Pit Pride there. Um, the other book that I used a ton, you know it, the Indiana Hand Center Protocols book. Um, this is the fourth edition. It is super old. I think they are working on a new edition, but this is a really good starting point, especially for anybody new to hand therapy. You're not going to hurt a patient if you follow protocols or you shouldn't follow a protocol. You should use the protocol as a starting point and go from there using your clinical reasoning. But when you're new, you have nothing to go off of. So I used this religiously. My fieldwork supervisor actually had this book in the clinic and I would go in early in the morning. I would stay late in the afternoon um, and I would take notes from this book. I would pick, they have this long list of all the different diagnoses, surgical procedures, all that kind of stuff. I would pick something I thought was interesting. I would go to the page and I would take notes. Sometimes I would copy it into my notebook or I would like highlight different parts of it. Um, and then I would take it home and I would study. So I went early to my site and I would stay late just to like look through this book. And then after I finished my field work, I actually purchased it for myself and I still use it as a reference. Um, I don't use it all the time because you start to remember things after a while, but it's a really good starting point. And you know, again, we can't follow protocols perfectly because every patient is different. Every surgeon performs things differently. And these are a little bit outdated, to be honest. Some of them are more conservative than you want to go for a lot of things, but it's a great point to start. So I would highly, highly recommend that you use this book if you are new to hand therapy or a fieldwork student. It will definitely give you some comfort and give you a good starting point that you know you can trust. And then one more book that I did not have during my field work, um, but I would recommend it as a starting point for anybody looking to transition into the field. It's a good resource. It is an investment. It's not a real cheap book series, but it is, if you know that you're gonna do hand therapy, it is worth buying because you will keep it forever. Um, they actually have a new edition this year too. So, I have the sixth edition, Rehab of the Hand. It's a two volume series, super thick, really heavy books. These are amazing. I used it um, when I was studying for the certified hand therapy exam, but it would be so helpful for anybody in the field. Um, and especially if you're new, because it, it has chapters, it goes into more detail. It tells you what you need to know and probably way more information than you even want to know, but it's so helpful if you have a patient that you don't know what to do with, it's a good resource for that. So I just wanted to mention it. I don't think you absolutely need this for your fieldwork experience. Like I said, I did not have access to this book when I was doing my fieldwork, but it's a good reference in case you're interested. So I just wanted to include that too. Okay, and then just a few like words of wisdom, I guess, from someone who has been through it before, um, and especially from someone who is a perfectionist um, in every single way, just be forgiving of yourself. Know that you are there to learn and that you are not going to know everything. You'll probably never know everything, right? I mean, I've been a hand therapist for for almost four years. I graduated four years ago from school. I am a certified hand therapist. I'm still learning every single day. There are things that I don't know all of the time. I know a ton of colleagues that have been in the field longer than me. All of us are still learning. It's okay to not know things. Um, it's not okay to give up on yourself. It's not okay to just accept that you don't know things. If you don't know something, you want to just let yourself be curious and get comfortable knowing that you're going to be in uncomfortable positions in not knowing, but make it, let it inspire you to look for the answers and always be searching for better treatments for your patients, right? Because that's what we're there for. We want to learn and grow as therapists so that we can better serve our patients. So that's like my biggest word of advice is just let yourself be curious, let yourself not know things and be okay with it and be okay 
knowing that you're learning and that you're not perfect. It's okay. <laughs> you don't have to pretend like you know everything. Those are the words that I want to tell myself, my fieldwork student me. I wish she knew that it was okay not to know. <laughs> And it's okay to ask questions. You should ask questions. Um, you shouldn't take it all upon yourself to learn everything you can. Ask for help, ask your resources, ask your professors, ask other students that you know, reach out to your fieldwork supervisor, get on LinkedIn, get on Facebook. There are tons of hand therapy groups out there, tons of leaders in our field, pioneers in our field that can help you. Try and collect as much information as you can, absorb as much information as you can, and always strive to keep growing. That's the best you can do. And love the field. Love what you're doing. If you love it, you're going to be in this field for a long time. Um, and then I think also it's important to put yourself in uncomfortable positions sometimes. It's things that challenge us that make us better. So don't be afraid to go in early. Don't be afraid to stay late. Don't be afraid to study, to ask for help, um, to ask questions, even if it might feel really embarrassing. Don't be afraid to pick up pieces of thermoplastic material, scrap material, and practice with them. You know, every little bit that you can do during your field work is going to help you grow as a clinician. It's going to help you build the confidence that you need to get your first hand therapy job. So be kind to yourself and never stop searching for more knowledge. That sounded really weird when I said it. Be kind to yourself and be curious. Stay curious, that's good. Yeah, wisdom. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.